Greetings YouTubers. Welcome along to my channel. My name is Shane. You are watching 40 plus noob NZ. My whole uh, reason for starting this page up is simply because I'm 40 plus years of age from New Zealand. So we have different licensing restrictions on motorcycles. We have all sorts of things on motorcycles um, that you don't get overseas. Now I'm uh, a 40 plus year old guy who's starting to learn how to ride on bikes. It's a, um, it's a bit of a challenge. And um, uh, so I thought my first episode would do it chronologically. So I've been riding my bike now for a few months. Um, I got it in uh, December. Um, I haven't been able to ride it for a month. So we might as well say I've been riding a bike for about four months in total. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm basically chrono, uh, doing a, a chronology of, of my learning processes and the things that I encounter um, as far as uh, starting to learn how to ride a bike. So what we're going to start out with first is um, a little bit of history um, of me and the things that uh, brought me to being 40 years of age and buying a bike. So the first thing is I have wanted a bike since I was about seven years old, but um, affordability was not there. I'd, I'd ridden friends' dirt bikes, I'd, I'd done all sorts of things right through um, into my teenage years, but when push came to shove, um, uh, my first vehicle I bought just after I got out of the military, I was in the military for about a year and I uh, had a medical discharge. Um, and uh, so I had to buy a vehicle to be able to um, to be able to uh, run around in. I was doing engineering courses and all sorts of things like that. So what I ended up having to do was um, buy a car. And then I met a girl, put her through university. Many years went by, lots of debt, had to pay all of that back before um, I could buy a house. So then I bought a house. Um, and then I bought another house and then we separated and money just was never an, an option uh, when it came to buying a bike. It always had to be about practicality. Um, I did have sports cars over the years, but I always made sure that I could take at least one other person in those. Um, and, and eventually I've, I've, I got into hunting and stuff about 15 years ago and ended up with a four-wheel drive, excuse me. And, um, uh, and so I've ended up with a, a four-wheel drive uh, since then. I met a partner um, uh, a, a, a wee while ago um, and uh, decided to shift provinces. I actually shifted from the South Island to the North Island of New Zealand um, and um, not too far away from Hobbiton actually. Um, so uh, as a result of that, basically we just decided, right, we're going to... Um, fix up a house. It cost me probably seventy or eighty thousand dollars to be able to move up here by the time I found a job and all the other bits and pieces. So I didn't have a lot of money sitting there. Not likely to have that kind of money sitting there again anytime soon. But I really wanted a bike. And my partner was sitting there watching me at night, looking over uh, the uh, trade me pages and researching and doing all that kind of stuff because I, I wanted a bike. So what we ended up doing was we bought a um, uh, yeah we, we were we, we bought a house we were in the middle of fixing that up and I saw this bike and I was like oh hun that's so pretty and she turns around to me and she says to me well we've got a few grand in the bank just go and buy it now I hadn't started my new job yet so that was a that was a big thing um, but I only had two and a half thousand dollars to spend. I had a look for other bikes. I did research on what bikes I could potentially want or need. Um, now, one of the reasons for starting up this page is because somebody at 40 years of age wants something very, very different to somebody who is uh, 20. So, um, I only had uh, two to two and a half thousand dollars that I could spare to be able to go out and purchase a bike. Um, 
I then had to be able to pay for my license because over here we have licenses. So um, we, we start out on a learner license, then we go to a restricted license, then we go to a full license. And it takes around about 12 to 18 months to go through that entire process, depending on how quick you do it. So um, uh, that was basically my Christmas present was to be able to go out and find a bike. I hadn't ridden any other bikes. Okay, I still haven't ridden any other bikes. Um, all I bought this bike on was pure academics. Uh, I had seen the bikes around for a couple of decades uh, and I wanted to learn a little bit more about riding and I figured, well, um, this was in the, in the range that I wanted was probably the cheapest bike out there. So basically what I ended up doing was um, I bought this bike and I'm going to reveal that bike in a, in a future episode. Um, I'm doing all of these episodes pretty quickly. So um, I'm just going to change my position a little bit. Um, so I'm going to do all of these in pretty quick succession. Um, and um, so uh, you'll, you'll probably get this the same day or within a couple of days thereof uh, to that one. So I'd wanted one since I was young. It was on my bucket list. I'd always wanted to own one right from the time I was really young. Um, other priorities got in the way. Um, so the research that I did found that the bike that I had chosen was actually a leader in its class. Um, it wasn't very well known as far as the brand goes, uh, but it, um, it came out of uh, South Korea. A lot of you will know who that is straight away. Those of you who don't might get a few surprises out of this. Um, uh, but what I needed out of a bike was it needed to be economic. This was the first time that I'd had a job uh, in close to a decade that didn't actually have a, a company vehicle. Um, so I didn't want to be spending half my gas, uh, half of my wages every week on gas. Now here in New Zealand at the moment, because the COVID-19 crisis has dropped fuel pricing down, uh, I got gas in the bike yesterday and it was... Um, dollar seventy six point nine. Uh, that's the cheapest place in in uh, in town to be able to get the fuel at that point. So you can appreciate that I didn't want to be filling up a, a one hundred. Uh, well, I've actually got a ninety three liter truck. Um, I didn't really want to be filling that up uh, every couple of weeks. So I thought if I can get something that's a bit more economic on gas, uh, that would be really good. Um, it also needs to be able to keep up in traffic, both on the open road and in, um, in, in the, the city area. Now, um, I haven't been, I haven't lived in the North Island since I was a teenager. So um, for me, I come from the North Island originally, but it's, it was a long time ago. So what I basically had to do was um, I had to find something where it was gonna give me the freedom to be able to go and explore the region. Um, so the closest thing that I'd had to exploring the Waikato region was um, I would go for uh, a pizza up here with my mates every now and again when I was really young. So I got into uh, into doing um, into doing this for for a whole bunch of different reasons. Another thing that I needed out of a bike because I'm uh, you know I'm, I'm 40 plus I've got four back injuries uh, to my name. Um, I've spent probably a grand total of about six months off work with various back injuries. Um, I've got four prolapse discs. Uh, I don't really want to be in a position where I have to um, be bent over when I'm, uh, when I'm on my bike for long periods of time. So comfort was massive and the price was massive. So uh, I had all of those sorts of things to consider. Um, so the bike that I got uh, I actually hadn't ridden any others. I didn't know whether this bike was going to be suited to me as far as uh, comfort or reliability or anything other than the fact that I knew that it was the most powerful 250cc motorcycle in its class. Now here in New Zealand, I'll just run over that real quick. So we have LAMS approved bikes. So LAMS basically means that you're not allowed to have over, I think it's over a 50 horsepower motorcycle. So that entitles you to go up to and including a, a 650cc motorcycle in some classes. So 
and you're not allowed to get anything bigger for 12 to 18 months until you actually have your full license. So um, I'm old. So when I was younger, the only thing you were allowed to have on a learner license was a 250cc or smaller. Um, and again, it was a three-step process. So you had a, a learner's, a, um, a restricted and a full. So what we ended up doing um, was we had a look at the 650s in, in, in the class. Uh, I couldn't afford a 650. I couldn't, afford, I couldn't even afford most of the 250s on the budget that I had. Most of the bikes out there are $3,000 plus. Um, and even then, a lot of the times they don't have Warren Fitnesses, they don't have registrations. Now, Warren Fitness here in New Zealand is a, is a six monthly test on your motor vehicle to make sure that it's fit for the road. Um, and you have to do that, otherwise when you get pulled up you get a big fine, um, you get your license taken off you potentially as well. So that is the history, the story and in a roundabout way of why I got into things and why I bought the bike that I did. The 250cc was simply because it was cheap for um, fuel, it was comfortable, it was still able to do 120 or 130 kilometers an hour on the open road. Here in New Zealand, the top speed limit is 110 kilometers an hour, which as I understand it is around about 65 mile an hour. Um, so, and there's only two roads in New Zealand that you can do that. The rest of the time you're at 60 mile an hour or 100 Ks. So um, I needed something that was going to fit all of my needs. Um, I needed something that was economic to get backwards and forwards to work on and I needed something that was going to be able to take me to various regions around the place um, you know up to anything up to three or four hours ride uh, is, is kind of where I'm at and, and in fact you guys will get to come on some rides with me future episodes um, we'll be going on adventures together we'll go hunting we'll go fishing we'll go um, on just on big long rides to various different regions I'd like to be able to take you guys over to the Coromandel um, and I've done some rides over there to Tauranga to all sorts of areas around the Bay of Islands and into the far north of New Zealand and really showcase the sort of semi-tropical parts of New Zealand. Um, we'll also try and get down to the South Island to do a brass monkey at some stage. I don't know when that's going to occur. Uh, winter's uh, coming in um, and uh, so the brass monkey uh, should be coming up very shortly. I don't know if I'll get to do this one but we might do one for the following year. Um, and uh, I really want to showcase New Zealand. I want to showcase the opportunities that you have for buying bikes. You don't need an expensive bike you just need a bike. I've got so many friends out there who are now in their 40s, the same as me, or in their 50s, and they go, oh, if I'm going to get into motorcycling, I want a Triumph Bonneville 500. Those bikes are going for big dollars these days, and these guys just don't have the, the funds to do that. I just went, I want a bike, I want to get on a bike, and I want to start riding a bike. Don't start sitting there going, oh, well, if I'm going to have a motorcycle license, I want this, or I want that, or I want the other thing. No, just get out there and get on the bike. Chances are that the bike that you start out on is not going to be the bike that you keep. And without getting out there and testing different bikes and what have you, you can't say that this is your forever bike. I can say after riding this one for three or four months, there are things that bother me about the bike, which will mean that in years to come, I intend to keep this one. One of the biggest regrets that I have with my cars is the fact that I didn't keep some of my favourites. Um... The and so with my bike, I want to keep my first bike. Um, you know, my first car now is probably worth about $25,000, and I bought it for 900 bucks. Uh, my second car now is probably worth $15,000, and that's now, um, you know, that's that's now in the scrap heap. Uh, my third car. Uh, it's probably worth nothing now, but my fourth car was a Toyota MR2 1984. Now here in New Zealand, those are going for twenty plus thousand um, dollars. Some of my biggest regrets is not keeping those cars. I loved those cars, and I wanted to keep them, but for reasons of finance, I couldn't do it. This little 250cc bike cost me twenty two hundred bucks. All I've got to do is put some oil in it. Um, it'll probably be my round town commuter, but 
for long trips, eventually I am going to have to have a, a bigger bike. That's as simple as that. Um, not necessarily for uh, anything other than a little bit of taking over. So I want to be able to take over a car without stressing um, because the 250s take a little while to get up to speed. They still pass, but you need to basically start passing at the beginning of the passing lane and finish at the end of the passing lane to be able to get past a string of cars or whatever. And in summer, some of the places I go are absolutely packed. And if you um, you know, have to sit in traffic, you're doing 20 or 30 k an hour for hours at a time. Um, so that's the end of this video. Um, uh, I'm going to launch straight into the next video. Um, so you'll get that at the same time um, and it'll be basically the review on the bike. I'm going to show you what the bike looks like. I'm going to show you why I paid the price that I did, um, why uh, the um, this bike ended up being my bike. Anyway, keep the rubber side down. Um, I hope this has been in some way helpful and inspiring to you guys. Um, I want to see more people out there on bikes. Uh, I want to see more of my generation out there on bikes and older. I'd like to see the, the guys in your 50s, your 60s, your 70s. I'd like to see you guys out there on bikes as well. Just get out there and enjoy it because I tell you what, I haven't regretted a second of it. But in the meantime, keep the rubber side down. Take care, guys.